So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another session of the Aquarium of the Pacific's Aquarium uh, Online Academy. My name is Talia. I'm from our education department, uh, and I'm going to be talking to you, everybody today uh, about a really interesting um, organism out there. We're going to be talking all about jellies. You might see some behind me here, um, as well as plankton. So if you have any observations, uh, any questions, during our session today, we encourage you guys to participate and interact with us uh, a couple of different ways. Uh, if you're watching this live, you can text us your questions to 562-286-1838. If you're not watching this live, uh, you can email us your questions uh, as well. And that email address is live at lbaop.org. Now, I have a couple of people helping me out today. I have Miss Stacy. Uh, behind the computer there. She's going to be changing all the pictures that are behind me. Uh, we also have Mr. Luke who's going to be answering our, or fielding your questions today during our program. So uh, I mentioned one of the things we're going to be learning about today uh, is plankton. Now what do you think about when you think about the word plankton? I'm going to let you guys make some observations just a moment. Get out of the way so you can see these beautiful jellies behind me here. Now these are a type of jelly called a sea nettle. And I have a question for you. When you think about plankton, do you think about something as big as the jellies that are behind me? Hmm. Most times, I sometimes think, when I think about plankton, I think about something really small. Uh, and there are definitely lots and lots of plankton uh, that are very, 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 very small. Um, but plankton doesn't necessarily refer to their size. It actually refers to the way that they move. Ooh, you got a moon jelly behind me here. How does it move? Hmm. It doesn't really seem like it's really swimming. I don't see them doing like the front stroke or the back stroke or anything or doggy paddling, they're kind of just moving with the water. And that's actually where plankton gets its name from. So plankton basically means you're a drifter. You kind of go with the flow. You're going to be going where the water is taking you. So if I've become Talia Plankton, whoo, there we go. I'm Talia Plankton now. And the water's going this way. I have to go this way too. And if I'm still Talia Plankton and the water's going that way, guess what? I gotta go this way too. So that's how Plankton uh, gets its name. It's really just how it moves. Uh, so you can have Plankton uh, that's going from something really, really small that you would need a microscope to see all the way up to jellies like these moon jellies behind me. And even bigger than this, there are some jellies that are as big as a person. Another interesting thing um, about plankton um, is that there's different types of plankton, right? So it's, um, there are plankton that are animals, like our jellies, uh, and there's plankton that are plants too. Um, and they have different names. Do you guys think you can figure out what each one is called? Hmm. I'll give you a hint. Where do you find a lot of animals that kind of are grouped in, in one spot. Maybe it's a place that you visit. If you thought of zoo, you're right. So an animal plankton is called a zooplankton. Uh, and it kind of spelled like zoo. Uh, and then a plant plankton. You guys know the really fancy word for how a plant gets its energy. Ooh, there's some plant plankton behind me now. So if you think about photosynthesis, phytoplankton, which is how a plant with all its leaves will get the energy from the sun into itself. Uh, phytoplankton is a type of plankton that is a plant. Now, another really interesting thing about our plankton, whoa, is that there are so many types of plankton. Look at all this plankton. Oh, I saw a copepod with that big red eye. There are so many shapes and, and body 
types and colors and I think that's one of the really 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 cool things about like that's I think a little diatom this little ball that's going into the distance there um, there's all sorts of different types of plankton so it's really cool to see just how diverse um, the different types that you can find are out there now plankton also is really important in the ocean not just because it's super cool to look at uh, but because it helps form um, a lot of times the base of the food web so uh, a lot of times you have a whole bunch of plankton out in the ocean and then something a little bit bigger is going to be eating that maybe a teeny tiny fish uh, a bigger fish is going to eat that fish uh, an even bigger fish is going to eat that fish maybe somebody catches that really really big fish for dinner um, so they're really important in terms of making sure that a lot of animals out there get their food uh, now what would happen if we didn't have any plankton well that little fish wouldn't have a meal to eat and maybe there'd be less of little fish and then that big fish wouldn't have little fish to eat etc 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 so it's really important that we make sure that our oceans uh, stay nice and healthy so we have lots of plankton uh, and make sure that everybody gets uh, a meal to eat we got some uh, nice example of some of our local waters here this is Amber Forest, some kelp forest friends in there. They're kind of doing some drifting too. There's Sam the shark swimming by. But they're doing some good drifting there. Now, fish aren't considered plankton. They're actually able to swim against the current there, but they're doing a good job of kind of going with the flow right now. Uh, now, not just fish eat plankton. There's a really, really big animal uh, that actually eats plankton as well. And I think it's actually really surprising that some of the biggest things uh, on the planet actually eat really, really small food. Um, and so much food that there's enough food out there to, to um, you know, all the little fish to eat, uh, as well as really big guys, uh, just like this. We'll get a picture up there, I think, in just... Uh, a moment. Now I'll show you an example of kind of how small sometimes uh, the plankton can be. Whoa, there's a whale! So that's a humpback whale behind me. This is krill. Let's see if I can get it. Da, 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 da. All right, so do you see those little shapes in there? Each one of those is a little krill. So I think it's really interesting that something as big as a whale, way bigger than me, will eat just like literally thousands of pounds of this stuff uh, every day. So these guys will eat plankton, uh, they'll eat little krill, they'll eat sometimes little schooling fish too. Uh, and do you notice something interesting about this whale? What is going on in its mouth? What? What is all that stuff? Is that a mustache? It looks like a mustache. It's actually made out of the same stuff as a mustache, but it's not a mustache. So that is actually called baleen. So some whales, not all whales, some whales will have special teeth like this, and they use those little combs to catch all the little teeny tiny food, uh, which I think is super cool that again, we're super big animal, eating super tiny, tiny little bits uh, of food. And again, if you guys have any questions or observations to share during our program today, please feel free uh, to uh, text it in. Again, you can text your questions into uh, 562-286-1838. Again, if you're not watching this live, you can also email us at live at LBAOP. Another thing you might not realize about plankton uh, is that sometimes animals we think of it be really, really big. They start their life off as plankton. So something like uh, a sea star actually starts its life off as a little itty bitty thing. It'll swim through the water and eventually it settles down on the ground and starts changing its form into what we normally think of when you think about sea stars. Um, so that's an example of what we call um, a marrow plankton. So I like to think of the M in marrow as it's changing in the middle so at some point in its life, it's going to stop being a plankton and settle down and change into whatever its, its adult form is. So uh, some fish start their life off as plankton. 
um, sea stars do as well, and also barnacles. I don't know if we have a picture of a barnacle. I should have checked with Miss Stacy before we got into my favorite subject of barnacles. Uh, but a barnacle also starts its life off as a plankton. So this little guy swims around, decides, I'm tired of swimming. Uh, and they do actually something super duper cool. They will glue themselves down onto a rock. So they make a special glue, but they put it on their head and then they stand on their head and then they make a beautiful barnacle shell around themselves like you see here. I think they always look like little gray volcanoes and then the little barnacle is going to live inside that shell. But how's it going to eat? Because it's standing on its head, its mouth's way down there in the shell and the food's above it. So they actually uh, will eat with their feet. Uh, you'll see these little hairs come out. They have little fuzzy feet. They look like little eyelashes. So if you ever have some tide pools near where you live, I definitely encourage you guys, or maybe you have some at a, at a local aquarium or tide pool, um, definitely encourage you guys to take a closer look at those barnacles, see if you can see those little eyelashes come up, kind of fan around, get some little, they eat plankton that's tinier than them, which is crazy. Uh, and then they'll whoop, bring it on down uh, and munch on it. So you have animals that um, will sometimes see plankton when they're a baby and then grow up to be something completely different. Uh, and then you also have hollow plankton and the hollow plankton spend their whole life as plankton. That's how I, I try to remember it. Uh, and those are things like the jellies we were talking about earlier. Those are also things like copepods uh, as well. And you might recognize this animal from a cartoon. Whoa! If you know your SpongeBob, uh, Plankton from SpongeBob is a copepod. Um, so they do have one big old red eye right up there. They have big, long antenna. Um, so they are a, uh, a type of plankton that spends their whole, 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 whole life uh, as plankton. So they swim around and eat lots of munchy food. I think we have um, some good video as well as about these guys uh, swimming. Just to again, see that drifting motion uh, that, they're, that they're known for. So we'll put that up. Ooh, so much plankton. I'm going to let you guys take a look. I love, this is a really cool video that we found. So there's a lot of little plankton. You can see that some of them are just kind of going with the flow. They're just kind of uh, drifting along. Others are having these really short sort of bursts of, of movement. Whoa! Did you guys feel that wave? I think somebody swirled the glass in this video. Whoa, that, whoa, did you see that really, really, really big one? I think that's always impressive too, because you're thinking like, okay, I'm looking at a microscope. These are going to be itty bitty ones. And every once in a while, somebody's going to surprise and be like a Godzilla plankton coming across the screen there. Um, so sometimes when we, we have a, a, a dock outside the aquarium and we'll go, whoa, there's that wave again. Um, We'll go out and, uh, and catch some plankton just to take a look at it for some of our classes a lot of times. And sometimes you don't even need the microscope to see these guys. So you'll just see all these little dots swimming around the little petri dish, which is pretty fun. I see that I have some questions coming in. Ooh, all right. So I had a friend ask me, how do fish eat plankton? That's a great question. So um, I think sometimes it just depends on um, what their mouth looks like. Some of them have little gill rakers, like our, thank you, Miss Stacy, uh, like our basking shark here. So they have special teeth. You don't, they don't really have chompers like us. Uh, can you guys see all these lines here? So that's their gills, that's how they breathe. But inside that, they have little combs. And think like the baleen that the whale has, those little combs are gonna help catch all those little plankton and then they go go and then they just swallow it down so that's how something like a fish can eat Ooh, thank you excellent drawing here so here is i'm gonna get a little bit whoa did you see those little combs come out those were those gill rakers and that's how um the fish will eat something that's so so small it'll just kind of catch it so think like um if you've ever made pasta and you have um that special bowl with the holes in it the colander and the water will whoosh, go through, but all the little pasta stays inside. That's kind of how 
these uh, these animals are using those gill rakers uh, or whatnot to catch the plankton. Excellent question. Ooh, I have another question that says, can fish be plankton too? Yes, they can when they're babies. Uh, so when they're babies, they're itty bitty. Oh my goodness, that is an adorable baby sea bass behind me. This is a baby giant sea bass. Um, they can be considered plankton. I'll let get out of the way so you can see all the adorableness. Um, they definitely uh, will be plankton when they're babies. And then when they grow up, uh, they're a little bit stronger. They're not going to be really considered plankton as much anymore because, again, they're not so much a drifter. Uh, they're going, uh, they're able to be strong. They have muscles that are strong enough to go uh, against the current. So when they're babies, yes, they can definitely be considered plankton. Uh, actually, speaking of fish and speaking of plankton, um, do we have any flatfish? Pictures, Miss Stacy. Ooh, so this is an, a flatfish. Whoa! I'm gonna get out of the way here. Flatfish. They're actually doing a really good job at hiding. Um, a flatfish is a type of fish um, that will kind of change its body shape as it's going from being more of a plankton fish uh, to just a fish fish. Whoa, babies! Um, so look at how small they are. And then when they get big they're I want to say I'll get like that something like that yeah that probably depends on the type of uh, flatfish I'm sure there's there's flatfish that are that are bigger than that um but when they're babies um this one I think is actually already starting to to flatten out I just noticed that um but when they're like little little littles a lot of times they're born like a regular fish they swim around like that they have an eye here they have an eye there, just like a normal fish. And then eventually, you can see, I didn't realize they changed this young. I've learned something new today. Um, they're going to pick a side. And then what I believe certain species have a preference kind of for which side they flip onto. Anyways, they pick a side, they flatten out. But wait a minute, you had an eye here, and now you have an eye here. And you got a whole bunch of sand down here too, so that probably is going to be a little, little itchy, a little scratchy for your eye. So what happens, and actually I think you can see in this picture too, is the eye moves all the way up to the other side of their head. It just kind of shifts its position, which is pretty interesting. So yeah, I think you can see it here. I see, I spy with my little eye. Thank you, Miss Stacy, an eye there, and then an eye right next to it i'm gonna get really good about my backwards pointing today i'm gonna to try so so hard one two just on one side of their head so that way they can see what's going on above them there and they don't get an eye full of sand a fish can definitely be considered plankton too uh, when they are babies which is pretty cool i'll talk to you a little bit more uh, about jellies i think next because we were definitely going to talk about uh, some jellies today. This is again those sea nettles that we were seeing earlier. Let's talk a little bit. Uh, we were talking a lot about how they move. They move using their bell, which is this big part here. Uh, they have muscles that are kind of stretched in there and then they'll kind of pulse a little bit like that and that's how they're moving. Again, they're still going wherever the water is taking them, uh, but that's what's going to give them a little bit of a push Forward. And I think they found out with some jellies that um, they're not only having that initial pulse, but I think that motion actually makes another little pulse in the water too, which is pretty cool. Now, what about all these super long things here? Hmm. What are all those? Do they look the same? Hmm. So, there's these really long sort of frilly ones. These are called oral arms. You can think of those kind of like our arms. So they're going to help kind of gather up what food they've caught and bring it all the way up to the center. And that's kind of where their mouths are. They don't have mouths with teats or chompers. Um, they just have a little hole and all the food will get kind of pushed in there. Um, and then you have all these really long ones. And these are going to be where their stinging tentacles are so or their stinging cells are so these are their tentacles here um so they'll be drifting around they'll kind of more or less bump into something uh they'll sting it with the stinging cells they're actually um little harpoons that come out and uh will inject venom into their prey 
uh, that will mobilize it, it will be still. Um, and then they'll use those oral arms to catch up uh, what they eat and then bring it up to their mouth. These are our moon, or excuse me, our sea nettles swimming around again. This is a really, you might be wondering, why are they going up in such a weird fashion? So a lot of times you'll notice in aquariums that jelly exhibits are round or semi-round. This one, um, we sort of, and, and again, they're going to go with the flow of whatever the flow is in the exhibit. With this particular exhibit, um, the flow is in the middle, so it kind of comes up here, and then I think it curves around. So that's why you have this kind of upper push for our jellies. And this, this is actually nice because I can just stand right here and there's still <laughs> some jellies uh, beside me. Whoa! There it goes, pulsing. Those, those stinging cells, watch out! Oh boy. <laughs> um, so they will um, use those, uh, those stinging cells and those oral arms to help them get their food. Sometimes you'll see that with our moon jellies here at the aquarium too. We'll kind of pour out uh, a lot of little baby uh, brine shrimp and uh, it'll kind of just all get in the water and you'll see them drift around. It kind of starts like um, they have really messy faces. If you've ever um, had a little kid try to eat some, they get spaghetti face. They get just it all over uh, the insides there. And eventually those oral arms uh, are going to be sort of kind of sweeping the inside uh, of that bell and bring, again, bring everything to uh, the middle where they have those little openings to get into their stomach. So they're going to eat their food and then they got to poop their food too. So sometimes you'll see that uh, as well. So if you're, if you're uh, at the, if you're visiting the aquarium and uh, you see some brown stuff, probably don't touch that. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. What other things can I talk to you guys about plankton? We have a little bit of time. Ooh, 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 ooh. Thanks, Miss Stacy. That's a great question because I remember we looked at some cool videos earlier. So how do moon jellies have babies? Their life cycle is actually super duper cool. There's their, first off, those are the stomachs there, those four little circles. Um, on the side there, I think it'll loop, and uh, there we go, and get me some good images there. So those four little circles are their tummies. Um, some of them have four, four is kind of the norm, but some of them can have more, some of them can have less. So I always think that's fun uh, to look at that variance there. Uh, now, when they're babies, they're plankton, uh, and they start as a little itty bitty thing. They'll summer on the summer on the summer on the summer. They'll, they'll settle down. Uh, and then they will start making pancake stacks of themselves. So these are called like stro strobuli. Yeah, so it's strobulization if you want to be fancy about it. So they almost look like sea anemones here. Um, and if you think about a jelly, if you take a jelly and you turn it upside down, it kind of looks like a sea anemone, right? They're actually kind of related to each other. They're kind of like cousins. Um, do we see, I'm going to see if I can point, this one you can kind of see too, but this one, do you see all the little segments here? So there's like one, two, three, uh, 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 four, five, six, seven, eight, there's like what, at least ten here? Um, every little segment is an individual jelly, so eventually, you can kind of see them pulsing over here too, um, eventually, they're going to get to a point uh, where those individual little segments are going to pop, 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 pop. Uh, and then you'll have these little guys swimming around and they almost look like little flowers. They're not even a fully formed bell like we saw with the moon jellies. Um, they're called a fire. The little guys will swim around like that. And then their body is going to change like, I don't know, it's a, what, at least like seven more times. That's a, then slowly you're going to get that, that traditional kind of rounded shape like we see with our moon jellies here. Ooh, Audrey has a great question. Hello, Audrey. Thank you for uh, joining us today. How do jellyfish glow? That is a great question. So with our moon jellies here, uh, they're not necessarily making their own light, but there's definitely, this is more, I think, how the light's hitting them. Their body's kind of a little bit of a milky color, but it's a little bit clear too. But there are definitely some jellies that do what we call bioluminescence which uh, basically means that you have something inside of you uh, that can make a reaction that makes light. Um, so we will, they'll um, basically 
have um bleh. <laughs> they will ah thank you so they will this one um i think is pretty cool so do you see all these little blue dots those are little pockets uh, sometimes it's bacteria sometimes it's just a chemical that they have in their body and that allows them to produce light which is pretty neat um, there's other jellies um, that do what we call biofluorescence if you ever have played with glow-in-the-dark stickers before it's kind of a similar or a black light it's a really similar idea so it's taking light and then it's reflecting it into a different color of light so this is called a flower hat jelly do we see all these little green spots there so there's little spots with a little protein that will actually make its own light or excuse me um not make its own light but reflect a different light uh back than the one that you're shining on it so this is probably being shown with a, a uv light or a black light which is a little bit more of a purpley color uh, and then it's reflecting green back and what's really cool about these ones is uh they figured out the scientists figured out what this protein is and then we can actually use something that's very similar to that i forget if we use the actual protein itself or it's something that's based off of it but we can actually use that in medicine as a tracer if you're just trying to figure out where something's going in your body sometimes it will give you some medicine and a little bit of it glows and they can kind of take a camera or a picture as they can see how that travels through a person's body which is super cool and we learned that from jellies this is not really neat um, now you might notice i'm i'm saying sea jelly sometimes you can say jellyfish and it's the same thing it's just um with sea with a uh, jellyfish uh they don't have fins they don't have gills like our fish do so we prefer to call them sea jelly if you call them jellyfish i know what you mean um so yeah, that is how sea jellies glow. That is a great question, Audrey. Thank you so much uh, for joining in and asking that great question. I'm glad we have some, some plankton and jelly friends uh, out there this afternoon. So uh, one more thing to talk about uh, with our jellies here. Let's go see. We talked about how they're babies. Uh, we talked about how they eat. Ooh. Um, does anybody know where their eyes are? Did you see any peepers? Mm hmm. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to see it here, but around, ooh, around the edge. Ah, do you see those? There's like little white dots along. I'm going to get, try real hard to be, I'm going to go make my life easier. And I'm going to point at one that's not turning on its side. Um, all along the edge here, sometimes you'll see little white dots. Uh, sometimes it's, it's where the jelly's body kind of makes like a scallop. It goes in and makes a point. And right above that little point, there'll be a little dot. And that's their eye. Uh, so it's not an eyeball like us. It doesn't see the same as you and me. So it actually sees the difference between... Uh, light and shadow so it lets them learn a little bit more about the world but it's not seeing it as crystal clear uh, as you and me so if you want to get an idea of what that feels like um, if you close your eyes and you put your hands in front of your eyes do you see how that looks a little bit different it might look a little bit darker you can kind of tell that something went in front of your eyes even though your eyes are closed that's kind of what um the uh the sea jellies you're seeing when they're seeing that difference uh between light and shadow which i think is pretty cool so if you ever see uh a jelly um at the aquarium uh maybe go try to see if you can find those little those little ice spots they're called ocelli if you want to be super duper fancy about it uh you might also wonder um if i see a sea jelly up on a beach can i hug it i would not uh, because those stinging cells can still be active even if they are uh, washed up on a beach. So I would still give them space um, even though you see them up on the beach. I know that's definitely a question we get asked because uh, we have a touch bowl here at the aquarium where you can touch jellies. Everybody's like, what? That goes against everything that I've ever heard about jellies. Uh, but yeah, our moon jellies here are safe to touch. But uh, even if you're on the ocean, you're like, I'm pretty sure that's a moon jelly. Unless you're 100% sure, I would give them space just in case because you don't want to get stung by a jelly. It's, it probably, probably doesn't feel too good. Um, well, I want to thank you guys so, 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 so much uh, for learning more about jellies. 
uh, and plankton with me. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about um, how they move, uh, how uh, different animals can be, di uh, be, can be considered plankton uh, at different parts in their life, uh, and all about our wonderful jelly friends. So thank you guys so much. We have more program coming along this afternoon. So please, whoa, there's a jelly. So please feel free uh, to stick, a uh, stick around and uh, we'll see you a little bit later this afternoon. Thank you guys.